Welcome back to another Mac Deck Tech. Today we're going over our fourth and final deck upgrade guide for Commander Masters, featuring Eldrazi Unbound. Today's episode is dedicated to Cairo Crenshaw. Cairo, you rock. Before we dive on into our upgrades, I notice that most of you still aren't subscribed. If you're enjoying these upgrade guides and deck techs, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell to never miss an upload. While Eldrazi Unbound definitely features some Eldrazi, it's definitely more of a colorless deck than an Eldrazi one. That being said, we're going to lean into the colorless theme that's already going on. Uh, so let's take a look at these cards that just didn't make the cut. Starting off is Crashing Drawbridge, a 0-4 haste enabler. We only have a few Annihilator triggers in the entire deck, and like aside from those, we really only have the Steel Hellkite who really wants to see themselves get haste. Everyone else could really wait a turn. And we still have access to our Lightning Greaves, so I don't think we're going to miss the drawbridge all that much. The next card up may come as a surprise with Duplicant. So Duplicant is a removal on a body that allows you to effectively make a copy of a powerful creature and opponent controlled. So why is this being taken out? Well, in my mind, commanders are becoming the prime target that we need to remove. And, you know, you just wouldn't get to copy with Duplicant. So it's a 6 cost removal spell. That gets you a 2-4 body. I just think that we have better things to do with it. You know, if this deck had some flicker abilities or something, I think it would get a lot more juice, and that's just not what this deck does. Endbringer is the only Eldrazi that was in the deck from the start that didn't really make the cut. If we had a reliable way to enable Death Touch on this, it'd be a different story, and I think that this would have a lot of utility. But, you know... That being said, I think we could spend our mana elsewhere. Fire Shrieker felt like an odd man out in this deck. It's a good equipment that enables Double Strike, which is a strong ability when we have Trample, but without that, a simple Chump Block really negates all the benefits that we get from Double Striking. Maze Mind Tome is card selection and card draw on a cheap artifact, but you only get to use the ability four times before it pops. It begs to see some flicker or graveyard recursion of artifacts, and this deck really doesn't do either. Ornithopter of Paradise is out. This mana dork is being replaced with a Murr that has some powerful combo and mana generating potential. Soul of the New Phyrexia is up next, and this card has potential, but having to keep 5 mana up at all times is going to be difficult at best. You know, what do you think? Is cutting Soul of the New Phyrexia a mistake on my part? Let me know in the comments down below. Spatial Contortion feels weird, right? We could use it as a buff, we could use it as a debuff, you know, just depending on, like, the situation. But I think we have better removal in the deck, and this just isn't necessary. Transmogrifying Wand is another artifact that wants to be flickered or replayed from the grave after we sack it for another effect. This deck just isn't going in that direction, so I don't think we're going to get the full value out of it that we otherwise could. Last up is Unstable Obelisk. Do I think we could pay 7 to blow up permanents on a regular basis? Yes, I do. Do I think that's the best use of our mana? No, I don't. You know, in a deck that was more focused on artifacts and running things like Unwinding Clock to make sure we're always untapping and having access to a ton of mana, I think this would really shine. But in this deck, I think the ability is just a little too expensive for what it does. So what cards are taking the place of those on the chopping block? Ugin the Spirit Dragon is starting off this list. This powerful Planeswalker is going to be a strong source of repeated one setter removal of both targeted and board varieties. Conduit of Ruin is up next, and they're going to want to search for some big finishers and also make those big finishers cheaper to cast. Liberator, Urza's Battlethopter, follows up our Conduit, allowing us to cast some colorless spells at flash speed and steadily growing stronger as we do so. Mer Welder is here to take on the abilities of our powerful artifacts that get destroyed and potentially go infinite all on its own. Void Winnower adds to our Eldrazi rank and will lock a lot of cards out of the game for our opponents and hopefully nullify a bunch of their blockers while they're at it. Basalt Monolith is here to give us infinite mana when used with Forsaken Monument, which already comes in the deck. Horizon Stone is here to just store our mana, basically be a battery. We're never losing our mana. Oh no, it all turned colorless. It was colorless to begin with. Uh, so this is great. You know, we're going to store mana between turns. So until we actually have the ability to go infinite, we're just going to keep storing up mana. 
Manifold Key is going to let us squeeze some extra juice out of our mana rocks and even give our artifact creatures some pseudo vigilance as a nice little combat trick. Moon Silver Key is up next and it's going to let us tutor up some of our powerful mana rocks that Manifold Key is already looking to help. This deck certainly pumps out a lot of mana and Staff of Domination is here to be a sink for all of it. This Swiss Army Knife is a tool we could use with our infinite mana to dig for answers, keep all of our opponent's creatures from attacking, or defending, allowing us to just swing out and win the game. But with those additions out of the way, let's move into our three R's. That's right, it's Ramp, Removal, and Reactions. Starting off our Ramp, we have Burnished Heart, which we could sack to go ahead and grab two wastes. Mer Welder, who can exile or destroy mana rocks, of which we have plenty, gaining their abilities. Palindia Mer is here as a nice little mana dork that ramps us for two at the cost of three. Scare Tiller can help us cheat out some extra lands, often as a result of attacking. Of course, we have good old Sad Robot, who's going to let us cheat out a waste upon ETB. Then we hit the mana rocks. We have Basalt Monolith, Dreamstone Hedron, Everflowing Chalice. Hedron Archive, Mind Stone, Soul Ring, Thought Vessel, Thran Dynamo, and Worn Power Stone. Moving right along into removal, we have both Ugin the Ineffable and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Both of them have ways to remove targets from the board, and they can do so repeatedly. Artisan of Kozilek has Annihilator 2, so we're going to force some sacks. Really good against any kind of Voltron decks. We love Annihilator 2. Bane of Balagad. Uh, so they're forcing some exile on attack. Flayer of Loyalties with another Annihilator 2 trigger. If that betrays, is not only going to destroy creatures, but also allow us to steal them. They're four stacks technically, but you get the gist. Meteor Golem has the, uh, the audacity of letting us pick our target instead of it being the opponent who gets to choose what they're getting rid of. Steel Hellkite is obviously going to just wipe out a bunch of targets all at once. All this dust will wipe most of our opponent's board relatively clean. Calamity of Titans is another powerful board wipe, and one where we get to set the strength as we see fit. Rise of the Eldrazi is here to grant us removal, with an extra turn as a nice little bonus. Desecrate Reality is going to let us pick off one target per opponent, and grab an odd permanent of our own to bring back. Titan's Presence is some nice targeted removal. Warping Whale could potentially exile target, but we're most likely going to use it as a reaction. Caldra Complete is a powerful equipment that will let us exile any creatures we hit while equipped with it. So, not removal in the traditional sense, but it is like an extra removal step. So I'm going to count it. Last up, we have Perilous Vault, which is just going to be like a hard reset for the board. With those removals out of the way, let's get into our reactions. We have a few flashable creatures and a few creatures that enable flash and everything else. Ancient Stone Idol can be flashed in cheaply, especially against any kind of like go wide strategy. Liberator Urza's Battlethopter can be flashed in and grant other colorless spells flash. Skittering Cicada is more of the same. We're here for that redundancy. Not of this world is a potentially free counter spell, where Warping Whale might cost us an extra two. Of course, Staff of Domination is the ultimate reaction tool, allowing us to tap and untap creatures as we need to. That being said, guys, it's time for the c -c 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 combos. Uh, so I've already kind of mentioned it, but Basalt Monolith here will in fact go infinite with. Ba -ba -da -ba. Forsaken Monument. So Forsaken Monument uh, not only gives all of our colorless creatures plus two plus two, which is nice, gives us some like life gain for casting them, cool, 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 but makes it so anytime we tap a permanent for colorless, which includes all of our wastes, you know, all of our lands, really, any of our mana dorks, any of our mana rocks, they're all going to generate that one extra. Using this with Basalt Monolith lets it go infinite. And now we have infinite mana to do with what we want. The other big combo that I kind of want to point out is, you know, really two cards plus any decent mana rock in the deck. Those being Merwilder and our Staff of Domination. 
So Merwelder needs to go ahead and tap and exile some sort of mana rock or mana generator from our grave. Now he gets to tap for mana. Ideally, he then gets to exile the Staff of Domination as well. Uh, we do have some things that let us copy the abilities of our colorless stuff in the deck. Uh, so it could be a two for one sale. Uh, and then from there, we really just get to infinitely generate mana as long as we're generating at least two. Uh, this lets us draw out our entire deck, tap down all of our opponent's creatures, you know, uh, keep all of our creatures on tap the whole time. Uh, it's, it's definitely a powerful combo and one that kind of gets around the fact that, you know, Staff of Domination in particular is a high value get that off the board target. And so this is like a nice way to kind of skirt around and be like, oh, you thought it was gone, but it's not. But guys, that's the deck. Uh, you know, are there cards that I cut that you think I should have kept? Are there cards that should have been added that I've missed? You know, as always, let me know in the comments section down below. I have some custom builds coming up in the future to tie this over between set releases. But until next time, good luck with your builds.